Welcome to the Coin Up Cowboys, the podcast where four guys explore the absurdities of everyday life, sharing our entertaining experience and insights on a variety of topics. Hello, Coin Opians. This week, Stephen shares his favorite stories of his time as the neighborhood menace. The boys have a hoot and a holler and good time swapping stories, but the question is Jeff, are you okay? Are you okay, Jeff? Huh. We'll find out. But first, Ryan and Stephen double team Mel's Hole. Well, that didn't sound right. Anyway, do you think Chris finally gives into the crazy and wild conspiracy the malevolent twins put down? Stay tuned. Feel free to drop us a line. We love hearing what's on your mind. Our email address is coinopcowboyspod at gmail.com. That is coinopcowboyspod at gmail.com. Like, subscribe, follow, and rate us. You can find us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple and Google Podcast, YouTube, anywhere you get your favorite entertainment. We release a new episode every week, so take a listen to past episodes and get caught up because you deserve it. Now, I'm switching over to the main stage. Steven is, oh, rubbing his head. Yeah, I still can't get over that buzz cut. That's a bit odd. Ryan is making weird faces at the camera with his lower jaw jutted out. And Chris is... uh, (laughs) Chris is sick of hearing me tell y'all he's squinting, so he's been holding a wide-eyed gaze at the camera for this exact moment. There you go, Chris. Let's hop on over and join the discussion. Quality H2O. High quality H2O. All right, I started. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for another Coin Up Cowboys episode. Gentlemen, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling fan-fucking-tastic because the fucking Detroit Lions have two wins over the 49ers who have lost four weeks in a row, baby. And they dropped Brock Purdy. (laughs) Dang, they lost four in a row? Four in a row, suck. baby. Crazy how the Chargers beat him, and then the refs like took it away from them at the end, and then there was like a bloodbath on the field when the players started fighting the coaches. It's crazy. I'll never forget that. Brutal, game. brutal. Are you stuck a bar of Hold on, Brian. How how confident are you feeling about the Chargers and uh, Lions this weekend? It already happened. I'm feeling very confident that the Lions won that that day. They, very, very uh, hindsighty of you to say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Back to the future. But you know, it was a fantastic time. What was Ryan? What was your favorite part of the tailgating? My favorite part was when Steven pooped his pants in the back of your truck, but he <laughs> shook it. He shook it down his leg and tried to hide <laughs> it, and we just saw it sitting on the floor. And we're like, Steven, you were sitting there. What the fuck was is it this? Me. Shaggy baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I knew I should have put those emergency poop ads in my truck. I have a few. <laughs> Let's bring them next time. All right, gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and hop into some questions. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question in the order you're in, and you're absolutely in the right yes. order. I'm changing my key light from red, yellow to blue. So I look very serious and calm and cool and collected. Yeah. All right, I'm going to ask you guys a question. You're going to say, uh, how do you do? And uh, answer that question, and we're all going to judge you for it, so. Be prepared. That question is, this one's also food-related. Last week was food-related, and it's going to be food-related today, and that's okay. And that's okay. If you were a chef, what kind of restaurant would you open? Again, if you were a goddamn chef, what kind of restaurant would you open? We're going to start with the first person to my right, Stephen. Okay, I would open up a pizza place, brick oven pizza place. In the back, there would be an arcade, and if you opened up the wall... You would go into a little speakeasy where they would have the most rare craft beers and bourbon drinks. Oh, galore. That would be it. Arcade, pizza, and speakeasy. Little restaurant. God damn it, Steven. You know, you come up with some really good ideas just when you don't give a fuck. Are you playing that mafia game? No. Yes. <laughs> there's a mini game inside i have to finish the mini game that's a really good idea that's a good concept if you that would go fucking viral dude fucking pizza parlor and in the back a fancy ass fucking bar thank you so much steven next up let's go with chris smoke shop baby you're gonna come in and we're gonna have all kinds of exotic meats and we are gonna smoke them all day and all night now Sounds you're like angels fucking heaven. You're probably gonna ask you be like, you know, Chris, there's this there's this just like amazing brown sugar molasses smoky smell in the air, but all there is is tables and smokers. Where's where's the rest of the cool, fun, hip entertainment? And I would say, ah, well see, see that door at the very back? 
That is actually where I cut a wall through <laughs> Steven's uh, speakeasy, and you have access to cool hip things that he's able to think of. <laughs> and I'm just gonna I'm gonna ride you know his what, coattails. Chris, it would be cool to be able to like That's you know beautiful. bring your food into my stuff because you know I got the pizza going on, and then you got the good meats. We That's can right. collab. Yeah. Tag team this smoked Chris, brisket ooh, pizza. Whoa! I think you're onto something because it's kind of like that Korean barbecue, where it's like you bring that culture in, and you're bringing like this. I don't know what kind of is it the south, okay. the east, the west. I don't this, know. This goes but along great with my culture. my idea. My big plan is to create a restaurant called the Four Corners, and each one of us. Uh, you already said yours. Okay, well that's the second corner of the Four Corners. Uh, add yours. I like it. Over. I like it. Can can can, can <laughs> oh, there's a Four Corner. This I like is it. A, this is all in one shopping center. Yes, all. Yes, it's all one shopping center. We're all one building, four different. So wait, what corner are you, Stephen? I am the south, baby, southwest. Southwest, you're southeast. All right. Next up, Ryan. Easy Taco Bell food, scientifically perfected. <laughs> I thought you gave up Taco Bell, except for Island Taco Bell. No, no, no. Taco you gave up Taco baby. Bell. No, I didn't. It's back. Prove it. I have the podcast. <laughs> you said fuck Taco Bell. I swear <laughs> off, except for Island Taco Bell. <laughs> it's back, baby. <laughs> Ryan, I got a okay. question. Got a question. Yeah. A lot of times when I go to real cool establishments like that, um, like even today, I was at my job site and went to this new spot for lunch, and they had all these things on the menu, and I didn't know what to order. So my most common phrase, and my wife hates when she hears me say this, but I go up and I say, "Hey, what is the most popular thing?" Because that's what I want. And they said, sir, you either want the pastrami burger or the bacon avocado burger. So, Ryan, I go into your Taco Bell and I say, what is the most popular thing? Because that's what I want. What would it be? Cheesy bean and rice burrito. Double decker taco. God. It doesn't exist, Steven. I thought, Chris, when you were like, sir, you need to put some pants on. <laughs> no, no questions asked. These are my people. All right. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. What corner in the north, Ryan? Well, I don't care. Okay, so you're southwest. <laughs> northwest, northwest. Yeah. You're northwest. Stephen, southwest. All right, thank you so much, Ryan, for your obvious answer. I'm going to go ahead and round it off with the... Um... God, I fucking had it. Ice cream parlor. No, dude! I fucking had it, and it was perfect. You take ice cream, and you have these cold I'm countertops, so and you mix all your ingredients together, and then you serve it overpriced to people. Yeah. No, it's come in be... there, Cold Stone. <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember. Uh, it is the best and most perfect breakfast burrito spot. Okay, it's a nice all we farmer all we, boys. No. Oh, 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 Chris, the fuck, <laughs> how dare you? You have a burrito gas? I am in. I you guys don't know this, but I am hunting for the best breakfast burrito. In all of Southern California, I've been to many breakfast burrito spots, and there's other people that have, but like I'm on a real hunt, okay? None of this bullshit side quest bullshit. What, okay? what, what caliber gun do you hunt with when you're hunting for this breakfast meat? 45 cal. Like it. In okay. the hood, baby. Protection. Do you have anything to report, Angel? Is there a top breakfast burrito currently? Top I top? haven't met one breakfast burrito better than Gus Burger in Wilmington, baby. Oh, not a sponsor, but I'm going to check it out. Not a sponsor. And I think. Yeah, they accept cash only. Oh, fuck that. Those are the best places. I know. Don't, dude, I don't want to say they launder money because I don't think they do. They do. <laughs> cash places, you know? They cook the books a bit, you know? Okay, so, okay. so, so Stephen, there are, there are like three locations. Um, North Los Angeles, South Los Angeles, which is more like uh, Long Beach, and then San Bernardino City proper. Oh, wait, wow. what? Ooh. Hey. Yeah. Uh... There's also one in uh, Temecula for some reason, but I'm not sure. I don't know. That's not Temecula. That's like Marietta, have, somewhere down there. Have you guys eaten at a? So speaking of, because I just found this on Instagram, have you guys eaten at Lucky Boys? Never heard in of Pasadena. It. No, it is eleven dollars a burrito. No shit, this big. Oh boy. Nice. Or maybe it was like a tiny girl, but it was huge. And I was like, dude, I gotta fucking go. And she was like, it's not seasoned well, but for eleven dollars, you can't fucking beat the size. So I'm going to go within the week. So, yeah, I'd have a, in the northeast, right next to the Berg. Solid. I um, like it. Good. I like a good breakfast burrito. Dude, can't beat it. And uh, thank you so much for your answers. We're going to go ahead and bring up the pick. Wait, 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 wait. Do we have any grievances? Any any bones to pick tonight? Fresh out. What? Nothing controversial? Um, I, I, have a, I have a bone to pick. Oh. oh, I had to prod Ryan into that one. 
He's reaching for some deep memories right now. Mm-hmm. I'd like to travel back to Halloween, as some mm-hmm. of you Coinopians may have recently oh, boy. listened to a Halloween episode. Sure. And one of our cowboys was extremely disrespectful to me during my <laughs> second. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Who on earth could this be? Steven fell asleep. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> conspiracy. It's conspiracy. There's no video. Very there. upsetting. I had a listener come up to me and said that was very rude of Steven to fall asleep during the, the podcast. I had a listener come up to me and said, I don't blame you. I fell asleep too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Nice. Rude. Nice. I have a bone to pick over that Halloween episode as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Picky, picky, picky. Yeah. Well, I was describing the best candy and talking about which candy meant a lot to me. Ryan said, what are you, fucking 72 years old? Because I like Junior Mints. It's very rude. And I still resent you for that. Uh, that made me laugh. That was good. Didn't make me laugh, Chris. <laughs> Don't worry. I laughed enough for the both of us. All right, spin your fucking wheel. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much for bringing your grievances to the table. We're going to have an official, um, what is it called? Fuck you, November. Farticulous. But junior junior mints are absolute terrible. I don't know how people can ingest that kind of stuff into their body. Well, listening back, Chris did say he hated like almost every candy, including Skittles. <laughs> like Chris is like, oh, yeah, I don't like that one. No, Skittles. Skittles Ugh. are terrible. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't he, like Skittles. Chris, yeah. hated, like, almost, Chris hated almost every candy that was brought up, <laughs> except Dude, for I was, Twix. I was at a party one time, and someone mixed Skittles and M&M's. And I knew that a psychopath <laughs> had been there. That is psychotic behavior because there's different textures. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're spinning, and it's going to land on. Oh! Hey! Hold on, hold on. Before this oh! gets started. Oh. You guys remember Andrew Dice Clay? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. I love his uh, nursery rhymes. Ryan, what did you bring for the coin opians this week? Oh, we had a, we had a, we had a very special week. Very special week. What the fuck is Steven wearing? (laughs) That is a gold chain angel. Uh, My notes here. Anchorman. He's wearing a blazer. A nice sharp blue blazer. Hey, hey, Steven. Remember when you took two blazers to Vegas? You bought two brand new suits. How many did you come back with? Zero. Yeah, one, zero. Why? One, I don't. I don't know if you puked on it or you oh. left it at the strip club or what. But he just took the whole outfit off and just left it somewhere. How do you? How do you leave it at a strip yeah. club? It was like a dark gray slim fit. It was fantastic on him. All right. <laughs> so this week I'm bringing you guys a very special episode. Yes. We're going with a unique format. This week's segment is entitled Mel's Hole. What? What we are presenting today is a dramatization of an episode <laughs> of. A radio show called Coast to Coast AM. This episode aired February 21st, 1997. Oh, Steven, take it away. Please enjoy, everyone. <laughs> oh, cue the intro music, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another episode of Late Night with Easy Steezy. Happy to have you here and hope you enjoy these six hours of uninterrupted talk brought to you by Astroglide. When it's a rough ride, avoid the spitting to reduce the friction and go for a ride with Astroglide in stores near you. (laughs) All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into this show. I think we should start off tonight with a call taking calls all night you know dial in 1-800 go fuck yourself uh let's start with line one hello caller uh what's your name where are you from hello hello long time first time big fan big fan my name's mel i'm calling from australia didn't you know wow down where the toilets flush backwards across the pacific i must uh i must ask you uh why did you leave washington i left washington you know the government steezy the government they seized my land because of the hole on my property. Well, that just sounds ridiculous. Why would they uh, take your land, Mel? Uh, well, well, you see, the hole. It's because of the hole, Steezy, I told you. It's a bottomless pit. Uh, seen those in Star Wars myself. Bottomless pit. Uh, you know, care to elaborate? Well, it's a bottomless pit. It's self-explanatory. I own this property. Just nine miles out of Ellens, Ellensburg in Washington. It's in a Kittitask County. I owned it since the 60s. 
steezy, the 60s. Mm. Now it's, it's pretty rural, and since I owned it, myself and some of the other locals, we used it to dispose of a lot of our junk. Well, uh, I don't know what to say. I guess that's one way to do it. Uh, why do you believe it's bottomless? If you've been throwing junk in there since the 60s, I assume it's filling up by now. <laughs> you think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> but the thing is, we've, we've never heard anything touch the bottom. <laughs> not, a, not a peep. That just defies all laws of physics. Well, there must be a bottom. Have you tested your theory of it being bottomless? Uh, I guess. We just watched all the trash fall into this dark abyss. But yeah, I, 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 I took some fishing wire. I took 80,000 feet of fishing wire, I linked it together, and it never touched the bottom. It's an abyss. I don't understand. It, ever since I acquired it, it's so strange. Oh, uh, stranger than it being bottomless? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me tell you. So when I first acquired the property in the 60s, I met a very good friend of mine. His name is Gerald Osborne. He, he also calls himself Red Elk. It's a ceremonial name. He's a medicine man, half Native American, half white man, and he he spoke of legends, Stacey. Legends. Mm -hmm. Yes. He said that before I acquired the property, the government had a secret base there, and they studied alien activity. Mm, Alien activity, you say? Ah, Yes, aliens. Spooky green men. I don't know. But that's not even the strangest part, Stacey. I know a lot of people think aliens are weird, but that's natural. But there's something no good about the whole Something dark. You see, animals refuse to go near my hole. But any time I've taken my dogs or my friend's dogs over there, they, they refuse to go near the hole, except one time. Well, I'm keen to not believe you, Mel, but uh, I'm a little scared. And I'm kind of curious about how it happened that one time. Why don't you tell me about that and our viewers here on Easy Steezy Radio. Steezy, I, I, I told you. We threw our junk down the hole, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so one time my buddy, not Red Hawk, one time my buddy's dog <laughs> passed away. <laughs> his, his, his dog... <laughs> not Red Hawk! <laughs> I'm going to meet when myself, dog, sorry. When the dog passed away, Steezy, he asked me if he could dispose the dog in the hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you never have to see it again. It'd just be gone. But I'm not one to turn a buddy down. So I said, sure. I, I helped them drop the pup down the hole. Oh, but, man. It's heavy. Uh, what, well, per usual, we, we never heard it hit the ground. But the next day, the next day I went to visit my hole. And 10 feet away from the hole, Steezy, was my buddy's dog. Mel... I think a lot of our viewers are wondering and listeners are wondering at this point, uh, have you had anything to drink over the past couple of days? Any drugs? All day, day, every day, Steve. I imagine you need to cope with the fact that you have a bottomless pit in the back of your yard. But um, I'm sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. You know, on the ground, you found your buddy's dog. Wow. So he was alive again? He was alive. Alive. His name was Winchester. And she just she just looked like she was ten years younger, just a young pup, about about one year old. I swear to you, I swear to you, Steezy, it was the same pup, the same face markings and everything. And she just looked at me, dead in the eyes from mm. ten feet away. Wow! But something was off in her eyes, Steezy. It didn't sit right with me. My God! Give me a second here, Mel. <clears throat> I think you've discovered the fountain of youth, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, Steezy, because it wasn't like she was young or something was off. And I'm dead certain that it was the body of Winchester. I'm not sure that she was Winchester. She quickly ran off and I never saw her again. I could never bring myself to tell my buddy that I saw her, Steezy, as crazy as it sounds. Oh, well, uh, this is a pretty big show and I... I kind of hope your friend's not listening tonight. We've got a lot of viewers down there. Angel, I'm, chef, I'm sorry I never told you. But I promise, I believe from the bottom of my heart, it was not her. Now, after I saw Winchester, Steezy, a few months a few months later, I got a visit from the government. <laughs> and they presented me with some papers about seizing my property. 
scared the living daylights out of me, so I, I fled. I fled, and now I live my days in Australia, and this is the first time that I've talked about it since I since I lost my hold to the government. Well, first and foremost, let me tell you what an honor it is that you have decided to share that with us tonight. You know, I uh, wish you all the best, and uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to cut to commercial here for a second. Uh, we have a commercial here. Hold on. Oh, no, we don't. We lost all of our sponsors thanks to that last segment, actually. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be at what? CIA, open up! <laughs> what is going on? That's the end. That's the end. So, cow- so, Cowboys, that, that was a reenactment of a real episode of Coast to Coast AM that aired in 1997 about a strange pit in Washington. And after this episode, it became an urban legend that is commonly referred to as Mel's Hole. So, Angel, you might be asking, what happened after this episode I've aired? Been in, I've been in Mel's Hole before. <laughs> I, was, I honestly thought that's what this was about. I'm like, what is going on here? But anyway, Angel, you might be asking what happened after this episode aired in 1997. Uh, he died. Did the CIA arrive? I'm not sure what happened to Mel because I'm only caring about the hole. Oh. Several years after it was reported that it was seized, remember Red Elk? I called him Red Hawk at some point. His name was Red Elk. You guys remember Red Elk? In, two, in 2002, Red Elk wanted to, to bring this this conspiracy theory to the truth of the world, and he he brought a group of 30 people together and scoured the land of Washington. You know what he found, Chris? He found a big freaking hole. He found nothing. Aw. Now, it, in addition to Red Elk's investigations, local news reporters in Washington began dig- digging into this story. They found that there are no records of a man named Mel ever owning property or even living in Kittitas County, Washington. And last up to the plate, the State Department of Natural Resources decided to chime in with a geologist by the name of Jake Powell stating that there's no such hole in Washington and one possibly could not exist because the size of such a hole would just collapse upon itself due to the uh, excessive pressure that would surround it. You know, I was I paid very close attention to the fishing line question. You said, hey, Mel said, hey, I, I got all this fishing line together and I threw it down the hole. And he said, 80,000 feet of fishing line. Is that the correct number? That is the correct number. Okay. Do you know how many reels of fishing line it would take to tie together to make 80,000 feet? I'm going to say 80. That's like, it's like 26,000 reels. <laughs> <laughs> like, like your average reel only has like 200 yards on it. And you do the conversion here, 8,000 feet is 26,000 yards. So yeah, yeah, that, that, seemed, that seemed a little fishy and questionable. Well, you can find that many reels. You get a group of people together. It's, a, mm. the bottom, it's an empty bottomless hole. May, you know. Maybe in the south, or collectively, or Arkansas, but not in all of Washington State. They don't got that much fishing line. Okay, okay, okay. So but, I want to, I want to, I want to pose the question to y'all: Is is this a, a true story, or is it a hoax? What about what do you say, you DJ Steezy? The uh, the right answer is hoax. <laughs> oh, 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 not I'm not saying the right answer. The logical answer is hoax. Oh, okay. Do you believe okay. is the question. Well, first I want to say absolutely beautiful coordination. I mean, I bought into it. I was really hooked, lined, and sinkered. That doesn't make sense. But anyway, <laughs> something like that, I believe it. I actually believe it. I believe that something like that would exist, especially with such government agencies coming around and all of a sudden nothing exists. You know, what's what's going on here? You actually you actually caught my attention. Christopher, let's say you. Oh, man, it is completely real. So I'm yeah, looking, hell yeah. I'm hell looking, yeah. I'm looking on here. He told reporters that he visited this hole many times since 1961. This man was aware of this hole for some 50 years <laughs> and then, lo and behold, and, and then the second question is: Wait, are you guys telling me that it's not common for the government to come and take Native American land? What? Because because that's what they did here. This guy was a half Native American medicine man, and they came and took it. I can see it. So yeah, 
And I don't, I don't really understand what it was like the lowering the dog and the dogs alive. I don't, I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but is there a really deep weird hold in the boonies of Washington? For sure. There's so much land out there that who knows what Titan in the bushes. That's true. Yeah. yeah I, I think the hole could exist as well. Have you guys seen the Amazon prime show, the outer range? No. Is it a comedy? Oh, it's a fantastic. It's got Josh Brolin very recent sci-fi western show and the whole thing centers around him finding this mysterious hole in the middle of his like uh his uh what do you call it farm range oh yeah Yeah. it looks like it's got some kind of alien aspect yeah it's like the the, uh, whole time traveling in the in the tv show did ryan did you ever watch the i think it was i don't think it was it was i think it was alien versus predator um, the one where it took place in like the Antarctic. Do you remember seeing that? Yeah. Movie? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So, one. so the 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 concept on there is all these people they're in like Antarctica and they're like there's something below the ice. We need to figure out what's here. And then they wake up one day and there's this perfectly drilled hole for like thousands of feet that goes all <laughs> the, that goes all the way to the bottom below the ice. And below the ice, there's like this stone fortress. And as the movie progresses, that's kind of where like stuff happens. But it was this beautifully like laser blasted hole, and that's what I'm envisioning happened out there in Washington. Yeah, I was picturing like a well that just never ends. Yeah. The trick is you got to throw the glow stick. Throw the glow stick in there, and if you don't see the glow stick anymore, that's a deep hole. Right. <laughs> is that how you test holes? That is correct. I, I put I put a glow stick in it and see what happens. So, Stephen, I'm going to test your hole. I'm going to shove a glow stick up your ass, and let's see how deep that goes. Yeah. But I have another thing I want to point out. Um, did Ryan, did he did he truly said 80,000 feet on the radio talk? Yes. Okay. I heard. I, mean, so, I say that without having actually listened to the episode. 80,000. Wow. He said 80,000 feet. 80,000 yeah. feet. Okay. So I want to point out that there is – the Cola Super Deep Borehole, which is much deeper than Stephen's butthole, um, but it took place in northwest Russia, and it is the deepest man-made hole on the planet, and it is forty thousand feet. So when oh, I'm yeah, hearing, baby. when I and, and that that took them like ten years, they just kept drilling it and working it. Then they got down there, and all they found at the bottom was like really hot water because you're getting that much closer to the to the center of the earth. But eighty thousand seems a little egregious. I think that guy couldn't count very well. <laughs> but there's probably a deep hole out there. What about the dog coming back to life? No, nah, I don't believe that. But Tanya did watch the uh, Pet Cemetery. Did you guys ever watch Pet Cemetery? By uh... yeah, it's a good one. I did not. I, I saw the I saw the trailer, and I was like, nope, that's not that's not for me. But she said it was good classic there you go but that's all i gotta say about that thank you very much dj steezy for your commitment to the role you're welcome i like that that was good (laughs) thank you so much it was just like it was just happening and i was like something's happening they're getting into it oh this is this is a thing and it was very entertaining to watch i kept wanting to like interject about the eighty (laughs) thousand foot fishing line but i said nah I'm sure it wasn't an interactive segment, Chris. It was that's like yeah. that's what I realized. Time. I was about to make was it this, one. Was this kind of like a co-op where you guys did the same thing? And now, Stephen, do you have your own segment? No. I asked Stephen to participate two hours ago. There you go. Solid. <laughs> All right, 10-4. I do have Chris, my own uh, Not Chris. What's your name? Ryan. No, Socrates. S- Stephen, do you need me to put my blue blazer on oh for your segment? No. Thong on for you. I got a thong. You know I got a thong? A thong. I bet you do. When I go to those parties. All right. Ryan, thank you so much for your beautiful topic. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and uh, spin that wheel. Let's see who's left. JK, we know it's Steven. I'm just going to share it every way, anyway, and we're going to spin it. The wheel only has his name, and it's spinning. So, so, so Ryan, Ryan, I, I'm, I'm envisioning this. You, you said you did you text Steven or did you call him to have that conversation? <laughs> I texted him. Okay, so let me let me guess how this how this text came across. Hey, Steven. I want to do a segment on Mel's hole tonight. Can you participate? <laughs> is that is that is that it how it took place? It was pretty close, and I said I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> I've been there before. I know. I know my way around. We can. You've do come that. to an expert. You've come to an expert. <laughs> he is down with the thickness. All right, Stephen. What did you bring for the Coinopians today? All righty, guys. 
Brought a fun little segment, short and sweet, but it'll be great. Um, interactive, not like Ryan. Um, okay. I was uh, inspired by a, re- a TV show I watched recently, and it's a show that's been quoted over and over and over and over and over again, but it's quoted for good reason, and it's good. But, uh, Castle? The Office. No, it's a little show called I Think You Should... No, I think you should leave. Oh. Uh, created by Tim Robinson, very polarizing show. You know, fifty-five burgers, fifty-five fries, fifty-five. 50, 50, 50, 50. Yeah, that one. Sloppy steaks. Um, but not that. But that <laughs> sloppy steaks. Yeah, and that's the episode that I am talking about because in said episode, uh, I believe he had trouble holding a baby. The baby was crying, very upset, and he explained the reason was because he used to be a real piece of shit. <laughs> you know. Well, to the surprise of nobody. Uh, I myself used to be a real piece of shit, sloppy steaks and all. Um, and I think I was the biggest piece of shit when I was like 13 years old. Wow. Uh, and I'd like to get into that a little bit. And then, um, this, uh, segment's called Steven the Menace. Uh, that's the title <laughs> of this. And I'm going to get into a little bit of the stuff that I did, uh, when I was around 13 years old back in Santee which is a suburb outside of San Diego. And uh, I think I have (laughs) touched on this a little bit in previous episodes. We used to talk about stupid shit we did when we were kids. And I think I talked about like putting duct tape on the road and letting cars run over it. And uh, the Ziploc bag water balloons that didn't go according to plan. So do you guys remember those stories? Oh, yes. I don't remember the the way I remember that. (laughs) Ziploc bag. Okay. The duct tape was simply, we would roll out a long piece of duct tape, like 30 feet long, and stretch it across the road, lay it down upside down, and then run away into like a bush or something, and wait for a car to drive over it. And after a car would drive over it, it would sound like this, like a flat tire. And uh, they would get really freaked out, pull over, oh shit, you know, fucking freaking out about it. And we'd be giggling and running away. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg, though. Um, so let's take a trip, <gasps> trip down. Steven, to, I have breaking news. Okay. About Hot Mel, off the fucking presses, baby. About Mel's hole. The double decker taco returns wow. to December 5th. No, it doesn't. Oh. It does. Show me proof. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> for, it, it's, it's, it's in time for friends miss. Oh my God. <laughs> it's in time for friends miss. Oh I'm, man. It's happening. I'm bringing it, dude. All I'm going to bring is like 30 double decker tacos. Dude, that's that makes me so happy in my soul. You guys, you guys are so fucking gay. Thank you for interrupting my segment. <laughs> that is the best. Taco Bell broke my heart when they took that off the menu for no reason. They took it off for no reason. <laughs> they have soft tacos. They have the crunchy tacos. And they have beans. Just put it all together, bud. It's the best fucking thing ever. And I'm going to get like 30 of them. I'm going to fucking fart for 20 days. And it's going to be the best <laughs> thing ever. So I can't believe that. That is the best news I've heard in a long time. I haven't purchased Taco Bell since they've gotten rid of that. I've <laughs> ate it, but I've never purchased Taco Bell <laughs> since they got rid of that menu item. That's how much I care about the Double Decker Taco Now you're back, baby. I'm back, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's get back to the other meat and potatoes here, and that's uh, the stupid shit that I menaced around as a kid. Okay, the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the airsoft wars of two thousand. Do you guys uh, remember when airsoft guns became like the biggest thing ever? Yeah, I hated them. It was like just after paintball, right? It was paintball was there, and it was really popular. But that was like a rich kid sport because, like, to get into paintballing, you gotta had some dough, uh, and your parents didn't want to buy it for you. And then also, if you wanted to go shoot it, you had to buy all the paintball. Whatever. It was expensive as fuck. But like my cousins had that. I wasn't cool enough to have that. So we got the airsoft guns, which are way more approachable. You go down to the hobby shop, 20 bucks. They'll sell you this gun. Get a freaking huge bag of the BBs. And you just ruined your parents' house with it because you shoot it all over the place. <laughs> and they find those little yellow airsoft balls everywhere. But uh, we decided in our neighborhood, we had like a cool little neighborhood with a bunch of kids and stuff ranging from 6 to 18 years old. Um, we decided we'd have big airsoft wars and, uh, one day in particular, we were having an airsoft war and this really, really freakishly tall guy, we'll call him Jeff cause that's his actual name and I'll just use it cause I don't care. Um, this really, really tall dude got, he was 18 years old, but he was playing with all of us. We're like 13, 14. There's a couple of younger kids. Um, 
we started fighting, uh, shooting each other, you know, hiding behind shit. And this one little kid, about eight years old, named Chase, uh, shot the Jeff in the face and the BB like, hit his lip. Did he have like goggles on or anything? <laughs> no, we just, didn't wear goggles, okay, Chris. Just, all right, cool. I had glasses, so I guess I was yeah. naturally the safety kid. So, so the little Chase kid shoots Jeff in the face and it hits him in the lip and dude fucking goes raging bull and <laughs> decides in his 18 year old brain that he's going to pistol whip the eight year old kid with his airsoft gun. <laughs> so fucking cracks the kid in the face with his pistol, looks down at the kid and goes, Oh fuck. Like, what did I just do? And booked it. And like the parents come over to us who we're still there and they're pissed off at us and they're like, what the fuck happened? We told them they call the cops. The cops come. They fucking go. Where the fuck is Jeff? And we said he ran off into the hills because he ran off into the hills. <laughs> and he didn't come home for three days. I don't know if he ever got there. So he had expert survival skills. I see it. Yeah. I was like, dude, is like such a bad influence. My parents hated that he was in the neighborhood. So like shortly after the fucking airsoft wars, Jeff found a way to get a real gun, a BB gun. Oh God. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a real, uh, I mean, yeah, it's BB guns. So it's not real, like pellet gun, whatever. So, uh, he's like, Hey guys, let's fucking fucking shoot it. You know, we started off with the, the cans and, you know, we quickly graduated to try to shoot birds and, they just started shooting people's windows from <laughs> like hidden spots and like he was, <laughs> like he's like I, I wonder what I wonder what would happen if I shot the window. Do you think it would go through the window? <laughs> Guess what? It goes through the fucking window and <laughs> did it shatter. Or just do a little hole. It did a hole with like okay. a spidery crack, and it was somebody we knew's house. And like they were like, "We know you guys shot it," and we're like, "No, we didn't." <laughs> You're the only ones in the neighborhood with a BB gun. Yeah. <laughs> You know, just denying, like just denying. And then Dude, one you, night we were you, running around with Jeff. Well, go ahead. You, you guys couldn't, you guys couldn't go to anyone else's neighborhood, like go a few blocks over. We're like, Oh, I don't know any of these people. Like you're, you're like, Hey, how about nope. that house across the street? Let's do that one. Solid. <laughs> yeah. Solid. Uh, well, we were at another, like, yeah, another house that was away from ours, but it was in the same neighborhood shooting another house across the lawn, whatever. <clears throat> Get away with that. Things calm down. But one night, we decide we want to see if the BB gun can shoot out the light fixture on a light pole. And oh Angel's boy. playing Dead by Daylight. Okay. I'm listening. And, I'm listening. Um, so we're sitting out here. We're sitting out in the street shooting at the light pole. And the first three don't break it. And, but, like, I think the neighbors are starting to hear us shooting this stupid gun in the street. <laughs> and then the fourth one fucking shatters it. And this dude from his front porch goes, hey, you little fuckers. So fucking... <laughs> I'm calling the cops. And so the cops came again for that. And we all ran. And second time the cops called. No, no one talked to the, no one talked to the cops. No, we all ran. And then, Smart. but okay, like Jeff kids probably Jeff got, right now. I think, yeah, I don't know what happened to this guy. <laughs> um, so, um, I'm pretty sure that they figured that it was Jeff because he's so freaking tall. He was like six nine, super skinny, long hair guy. So he's like, probably I think they 30 were, years old. Hanging yeah. out with <laughs> he was, it was really weird. And, um, so I think the cops went to his house. We got off scot-free because we were just like, I don't know what the fuck happened. So days go by. We do other stuff. You know, we, we're just like addicted to menacing. And uh, there's this alleyway behind my house. So there's like, I don't know. It's just like, it's a little alleyway. It's not like for cars or anything. It's just literally big enough for you to walk down. But it's in between all the houses. So we would walk all the way down it to like just check on people's shit. Like fucking just being spies or whatever. Found this one house with a pool. And um, next to the pool was a big bank covered in ice plant. So we spent the better half of an afternoon throwing pieces of the ice plant into the pool <laughs> until there was a layer of ice plant floating on this guy's pool. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. The guy gets pissed and he fucking <laughs> sees us throwing the ice plant and we fucking run back to my house. And they call the cops on us. And the cops show up and my dad's like, you need to say sorry and all this shit. <laughs> Go clean his pool. Uh, did not clean his pool, but yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to think of other menacing things I did. We definitely toilet papered people's houses. My friend was dating this girl like in another neighborhood. So we'd go to her house and toilet paper her house at night. Except oh. for it rained that night. 
And you it, toilet pa- the guy toilet papered a girl he was dating or seeing? Yeah, that's what Cause, flirting cause is cared, when you're right? 13 okay. years old. Yeah, okay, that's okay. what flirting is. So we toilet papered her house. It fucking rained or it got really dewy that night. It fucking all clumped uh, together. <laughs> it, so, uh, so, not, um, so unfortunately, I was not a menace to society in Yucca Valley. Um, and I've never toilet papered someone's house. But my question for you is, what is the correct quantity of toilet paper rolls in order to toilet paper someone's house? At least five. You really want to fuck with them like a like a 12-pack. Go buy a 12-pack. Oh, there you go. It's like, dude, that's like 15 bucks. Back then, it was cheap. Money well spent. Yeah. Or you could just steal it from the store. <laughs> mm. Walk out with it. Nice. In high school, everybody stole liquor. I don't know if that was like happening at your guys' high school. They would just walk into the grocery store, grab a bottle, and run out. And that was the weekend plans. Oh yeah, and it was pretty common because I think at that time, like the either the nineties or the two thousands, they told. So, so my dad worked at a grocery store, and he was told you're not supposed to chase down shoplifters anymore. I guess in the olden days, they wanted you to like they were totally okay with you tackling someone to save a product. But now they said if they go out the door, you just wave. You wave yeah. and just let them do the their thing. The million dollar lawsuit's more expensive than the twenty dollar bottle of vodka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, when I worked so, at Vaughn's and Diamond Bar, it, that was like it, it seemed like every weekend there would you would just have to kind of keep an eye on that door. Next thing you know, people would just out they go to a car that's ready to go and it would peel off. Just, okay, yeah. bye bye. Mm-hmm. Eventually, so, they just started blocking an exit, so there's only one way out. Yeah. yeah so when I worked at a Ralph's, they would like block the exits and they would just um, kind of have the doors like kind of locked at late at night but during the day but the fire the fire chief would eventually come around and he would not like that so he would say hey you need to unlock that door no no we're trying to stop shoplifters i don't care there needs to be two ways out of this building yeah so the days of minor menacing doorbell ditching toilet papering you know fucking with people's shit a little bit that that went bye-bye um and i started doing drugs and alcohol um good progression 15 14 15 (laughs) Uh, the first instance was Jeff, the the neighborhood awesome guy, stole a warm natural light from the back of his dad's truck. <clears throat> one, one warm natty eye. We had one, and it was just <laughs> in the back of his dad's truck, like after a fishing trip or something. And he just grabbed it, and we held on to it like a sacred little thing. And we're like, "Boy, it was such a yeah, menace." I know. He's such a piece of shit. And they were like, dude, let's let's go drink it. We're all going to drink our first beer. Yeah, let's do it. And so we went over to this like Mormon church across the street. And we like kind of hid in the back of the parking lot and like drank this like room temperature natural light. And it was skunked to all hell. And I just remember thinking, drinking it, going, this beer is the most disgusting thing on the planet Earth. I don't understand how people drink it. And um, was oh, and then we started smoking weed at the park. Because you don't want to smoke weed next to your house. So we go to like the park after dark and you'd smoke weed in the park. <laughs> but, the, but the cops would patrol it. I remember one time there was like one cop at the parking lot. There was a cop parked on the street and a cop like coming through the grass at us. <laughs> we booked it. <laughs> and we ran all the way from the park like a mile and a half to like the, um, the our high school. And we like jumped the fence into the football game and just went and hid in the crowd. <laughs> mm, like Assassin's Creed over smart, here. Smart, smart. <laughs> but my favorite getting caught story was, and this is the last one I have, um, was me and my buddy uh, Schmike, um used to go on a little peace walk every night. So like around nine o'clock, like 10 o'clock was my curfew, I think. It was like around my senior year. But like nine o'clock, he would call me up and be like, hey, Steven, you want to go for a walk? And I'd be like, yeah, but I don't have any weed. So like, I don't, he's like, no, I got you. I got you. He had a job. Like he always had money. He always had weed. Um, like, let's go for a walk. I'm like, cool. So we'd walk around the block, smoking a bunch of weed, having a good time. And one time. How much has changed for you, has it? <laughs> no. So <laughs> one night I'm like, it's like 10 o'clock and we're getting kind of late, but I was super fucking high, like way too high to go home. So I was like, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go home. And like, I finally like start rolling up to my house and like in the driveway is my dad just waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, Oh fuck. And he sees me run to Mike's truck, <laughs> get in his truck. And we just leave. <laughs> and, um, like he, like, what, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out. He's like, let's just go to Seven Eleven real quick and like figure it out. So we go to Seven Eleven, get a bunch of monsters and candy or whatever. I cruise home. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what I said to my dad. He's like, what the fuck? You know, it's past your curfew. And I look at my dad. I'm like, 
oh, well, like I left my video game at Mike's and, you know, I had to go get it. I forgot, you know, I was going to tell you, but, you know, we just went and like, you know, whatever. He's like, whatever, get in the fucking house. Like he says, I I need to talk to you. (laughs) (laughs) Super fucking high. (laughs) I need to talk to you. My heart is beating out of my chest. My stomach is in my butthole. And he sits me down on the couch and he sits in his recliner. He starts talking to me and he's like, listen, I don't want you to get caught up with the wrong kind of crowd. You know, you do a lot of good things, Steven. I'm just really happy that you're not like Mike. I know you don't smoke weed like he does. I don't want you. To, he's like, I just don't want you to start kind of shit. I'm like sitting there fucking high as fuck. fuck. Like, like, right. Yeah, I don't want to do that, dad. I don't like weed. I'm not going to smoke weed. I don't know to this day if my dad ever knows how fucking high I was when he was sitting there talking. He's going to know now. <laughs> I would not want my parents to know about this podcast. but Yeah, man. I just remember having so much fun being a little menace when I was a kid. And I was like curious about like the dumb shit that you guys did uh, to pass the time back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, I, I love being a menace, too. I had countless ones. Have, have I talked about the time I terrorized my community pool? What? No. <laughs> Let me guess. You pooped in it. <laughs> I wish. I wish. There's, there was a period of time, I was probably like 12 or 13, and I'd go to this community pool, and I would just, every other day, I would just go there, and I would drag all the benches and just throw them into the pool. <laughs> what the fuck? the tables with the glass tops and just what? throw them into with the, the pool. With the glass tops? Dude, that's so yeah. hard to get out. Is it a deep yeah. pool? How deep was the pool? It went like six, seven feet. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then something in my brain just got joy just thinking like somebody figured like figured out how to get all this shit out and reset it up. <laughs> so after like a week or two of me doing it pretty con- consecuti- consecutively, they started putting up like wanted posters off their Oh, my God. Head. That's hilarious. <laughs> It's like, if you know anything about what's going on at the pool, it's a thousand dollar reward. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> it's getting real. Uh, did you ever get caught? No. Oh, fuck no. I stopped. Man. I, you know, with, dude, with I told nobody shit. I, I'm, listening, I'm over here listening to Steven's stories and all the things he was doing. And I'm like, you know, Steven, on all the other podcasts, you give Ryan so much shit for being this menace <laughs> to society. And now I'm hearing all these terrible things you're doing. However,. Ryan over here throwing all that shit in the pool takes the cake, and I agree with you that he is a menace to society, (laughs) and that uh, we should find that thousand dollar wanted poster. Dude, I was merely a victim of um, guilty by association with Jeff. The (laughs) not when you're throwing those ice plants. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan was the Jeff. Got it. (laughs) Ryan's got, I love the fucking story. That's hilarious. He's just like, I'm just going to fucking throw this shit in the pool every day. <laughs> just because I'm fucking bored. Yeah, pretty much. Did you do it with friends? Did you ever get friends involved? No, Did your brother ever get involved? I was all by myself. I was Dude, all by myself. How long would this take you? Like 40 minutes? I mean, the, the pool was only like, Maybe five minutes away from the house, but I would you I would even like take the key because back then you didn't even have a key fob; you had a physical key. But I would like go around the back to like the gutters that were in the hills, and then hop the fence and do it. And then once that wanted poster went out, I was worried, really worried about them like dusting the fence with <laughs> fingerprints and shit. Oh my that's god! What they do. <laughs> this reminds me of the first time I ever shoplifted because I thought about fingerprints. So. I was like 14 years old playing World of Warcraft, like really into it. Nerd. You need to pay the monthly subscription. Uh, Parents didn't pay that, and I didn't always have the money to pay that. So back at the time, you could go to Walmart or Target or wherever and buy your like monthly subscription there and then activate like a gift card, more or less. But it came in like a box. (laughs) I remember going there with a little razor blade in my pocket. Damn, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Grab, grab, grab the little box that had the gift card in it. Like sliced open the shrink wrap as I'm walking around the store, and fucking grab the card out of it and leave through the garden center. <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> it's always the garden center. Everyone sneaks out the garden. Yes, center. yes. The whole the time, there. just fr- freaking out that like this little like twenty or fifteen dollar 
card that I just jacked was going to like wreck my life. <laughs> like just thought I was going to get caught for like days afterwards. It's just like panic that cops are going to show up to my house like they gave a fuck. <laughs> so are, are, you, are you the reason that all the gift cards are no longer activated? Like I could go in Walmart and I could take all the gift cards off the shelf and they'll mean nothing because they're not activated yet. I'm like one of many people who ruined that for everybody else. <laughs> like, oh, that was the first time like, I never shot. I wouldn't say I've shoplifted too much in my life. I've stole a pair of jeans once. How'd you do that? Like, did you, like did you, you put it? the jeans over your jeans? Well, I went to like Kohl's to like just try on clothes and I was a broke college student working at round table and I didn't have any clean jeans for the shift. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Kohl's and I was like, I'm just going to buy some jeans. But Without coupons and shit, the fucking shit at Kohl's is like 40 bucks. And I'm like, I don't got 40 fucking dollars for jeans. So I'm like, well, I'm going to try some on anyways. Cheap ones. So I go in the, 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 the fitting room and nobody even cares. You just walk into the fitting room, you try on your jeans. I'm like, well, nobody even cares what I came in here with. So I put on the jeans and then I put my other pants over the jeans and I walked out of the store. <laughs> <laughs> I, was totally to say, I just left the old jeans there and walked out with the new ones. No, my, my plot was to cover up the jeans with my other jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give up my other jeans, man. I was down to one pair or two. And I never did laundry, so they all smelled like round table. Mm. I, I, that's the only two times I can remember shoplifting in my life. Other than like mustard bottles with Richard. I think I stole candy once. Yeah. Man. Mustard bottles. Well, like when we were going out and drinking for a while, it was like fun for me, Richard, and Mel to like take little things from the bars. So, like, oh, a bottle of mustard or like a cool little like cup or something, you know? Oh, I still like stealing glassware from breweries yeah. and all that. And then Richard got carried away and tried stealing the Pliny the Younger tap during Pliny Day <laughs> at <laughs> Lucky Baldwin's. Whoa. Did he get caught? Let's rob so him this, he already. almost, yeah, I know. He Like the lady was very distracted. It's a very busy day and Richard gets it unscrewed. Nice. Right as he's pulling it away, it fucking <laughs> drops and then he it drops and he goes to pick it up. Still good at that time. And the dude next to him fucking calls him out. And fucking, you should put that back, kind of shit. It's like getting the spotlight on him. At that point, he just like fucking screws it back on, and then like the bartender goes, oh, "You shouldn't do that. <laughs> you shouldn't do that." We did steal a Pliny the Elder tap from Pizza Port. It was up on a ceiling, like in San Clemente. Yeah, you, you, you had to. You needed like rock. I think I saw it. It was you needed to be Nora like a rock climber to get there. Yeah, Nora stole it. Then Richard took it from her, <laughs> took it to his house, and it's been a, it's been a, a rotational like theft thing. So if you're ever at Richard's house and you see the Pliny tap, you you can steal it. There we go. Uh, it was. It's the it, game. It was like it was the second floor, and there was these stairs going down. But there was a wall. There was like a, a you know a wall and ceiling above those stairs, and so up along the top of it is where all those different uh, beer taps were. So you had to get on the side and hold on to it like Assassin's Creed and scoot down, scoot down, turn, scoot down, scoot down, and then unscrew <laughs> it, and then and then drop like I don't know ten, twelve feet to the bottom of the stairs and run off with it. Yeah, it was, it's yeah. So the rule of the game is if. You have it at your house if you successfully steal it. So the way to successfully steal it is you have to take it and not be called out. So you have to take it and by the time you leave at night, as long as that person says, hey man, you stole my tap, give it back, you get it. It's yours. But when it's at your house, it has to be clearly displayed at all times so that if you have people over or anything like that, they have the opportunity to steal it. So You can't throw it in your safe. One time I made Richard, I made, I took a piece of wood and I carved out the shape of it and I got online and I <laughs> Googled the image of it and I made like a, a replica of it. It was really <laughs> shitty, but it was like enough. <laughs> it was enough of a replica that drunk Richard out of the corner of his eye just sees a regular Pliny tap. <laughs> and then on the back of it, I wrote, fuck you, Richard. <laughs> he still has that tap. If you look at his row of taps up on his wall, he still has that tap up there because he like he put in like the little like uh, whatever you would call it, the female end of the screw. Um, so he could tap it into that bar. But now, now was, when, you, when you steal it, do you have to steal it with your left hand? No, you can steal it any way possible. Any, any way possible. Yeah. Because I know every time I'm at Richard's house, it's if I'm not drinking with my left hand, I'm going to have problems. Different game. Buffalo. It's where you drink with your main hand if you're right-handed. If you drink with your right hand, then if someone calls buffalo on you, you have to chug it. And it's like a fraternity game that a lot of people kind of went viral. And I don't know why we ended up doing it. But once you're in the game, you're in it forever. Hmm. 
So at any point in time, the rest of my life, Richard can come up called Buffalo on me. Ooh. Brutal. And he's always watching. Fucking asshole. Oh, like like he, he did like he did watching. at the Chargers game. He's always you. He will call it at the yeah. game on somebody, and it's like. I just want to enjoy my 32 ounces of IPA. I do not want to chug my 32 ounces of IPA. Dude, you're going to fucking kill me. Yeah. But. If, I, if I was to contribute a story. Yes. Uh, so when I was little, I never, ever contributed to any kind of like crazy bullshit. Yeah, no, none of that shit. I, I wasn't that kind of person. I always wanted to follow the rules precisely. You were a good boy. Which is fucking, no, it's fucking lame, dude. But uh, the one thing I did steal, it was at a beer fest. And, uh. I had, like, a lot to drink. Like, a lot. Fucking. And I was just at a... <laughs> I was at a, a booth or whatever, and the bartender was busy, and I saw this glass that they had, like, out in the open full of, like, grains, and it had, like, a shirt or something. I don't know what the fuck was in it. And I just grabbed it, and nobody said anything. And then I put it in my pocket. <laughs> nobody said anything. And so for the rest of the fucking time, I was walking around with the goddamn glass in my pocket full of grain. And then at some point... <laughs> yeah. At some point, I pull it out, and I'm like, hey, I got this. And they're like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, yeah, I just took it. And they gave me an ugly look, and I'm like, whatever. Yeah, that's that's all I've done. Wait, so you stole it and Fuck gave it no. back to them? I, I think Fuck you're doing no. it wrong. I kept it. Actually, uh, Brittany broke it the other day. Oh, no, karma. Mm. I know. It was the only thing. It was the only thing. Hope it's worth it when you go to hell. Hell, yeah. So, so in Arkansas on the farm, they have year-round firework stands. Like out here in Southern California, you can only buy fireworks on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, and you can only buy them in safe, insane uh, locations, right? So but back there, we go to the store and buy whatever we want, as much as we want. And they wouldn't question when you would go up there and say, I need you know, 80,000 bottle rockets. They'd be like, sure, let's ring them up, no problem. So my cousins and I, we'd always start off with launch them in the air all cool-like, but more often than not, it got to the point where we started throwing them at each other. You would like drop it near them without their knowing. And it would be like a quick scramble. We would, uh, tie the bottle rockets together, stand in a circle, drop them on the ground and say, Hey, uh, first one to moves is a scaredy cat. <laughs> uh, but it would always end up somehow with, we would, we would go find the fake gun toys and next thing you know, my one cousin is holding it and pointing it at my other cousin across the field. And I'm lighting a bottle rocket and shoving it down the toy like I'm reloading a firearm. And we'd be launching bottle rockets at each other. And I remember we had to stop because my shirt caught on fire. Oh, shit. <laughs> remember, remember Roman Candles? Did you ever oh, a Roman yeah. Candle war? Yeah. Yep. That was a good one, too. I would throw, uh, we would do, give you have waterproof M80s. Yep. That was a good one, too. Yeah. Oh, fireworks. Whole another it, level of it, it's funny it's funny because you have the roman candles like you have the most people bought the blue and white striped ones which were the horribly cheap discounted ones that kind of just blop out the end but if you pay just a little bit extra man you got these things that are shooting in a straight line 40 yards and you would just <laughs> light it and say run and then they would take off and next <laughs> thing you know they're all, zoom, zoom. it's fantastic Good old days. Yeah. Those were the days. Well, anyways, I always try to tap in. I think that's where I'm kind of getting with my uh, segments now is like, I think I always want to kind of dip into the past, something like a uh, nostalgic related or memory lane related. And yeah. Did Jeff ever see you poop <laughs> your pants? Who? Jeff. Jeff never saw me poop my pants. No. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of Jeff stories that I could get into now that I've remembered him. <laughs> you gotta find where he is now. Yeah, hit him up. I know. I know his last name. I'm gonna Facebook him and see if he's alive. Check the check the correctional facilities. I think there, there might be a rehab center. Might be a good guess. Um, but I see. So I see on here, uh, Stephen. Uh, let's see here. Would you? Uh, uh, talk to past self or future self. Steven said, I want to talk to the future self. However, on the podcast, he wants to tap into the awesome stories of his young self. Because I think what's fun for listeners and fun for anybody is like remembering the shit that they used to do. And uh, something through this podcast that I found was like, I rem- I'm starting to remember a lot of things that I've forgotten about. And um, just to kind of document it in case I ever want to come back later in life and hear some of these stories that I definitely will forget. Yeah. And like spark all that old old joy. Plus, hopefully for other people, talking about stupid things like doorbell ditching and toilet papering and the stupid menacing stuff reminds them of some of the bullshit that mm-hmm. they used to do back and when they were kids. Steaks. 
Oh, fuck yeah. It was, it was a real being, piece of shit. A, a real piece of shit. <laughs> being a young man was quite an experience. Oh, so much fun. Are you, so much fun. Are you expecting any kind of, uh, uh, you know, worldwide karma retribution when your kids become of age to start uh, their own angst? I think I'm able to teach valuable lessons because I did such stupid stuff. And I can maybe hopefully prevent them from getting into major trouble. <laughs> It's like, okay, so. you shouldn't be doing stupid stuff, but I know you're going to. So if you do, heed my words and don't do the extreme stupid stuff. If you see a police officer car, don't shoot BBs at that one. Shoot BBs at normal cars. <laughs> right. Yeah. I uh, Happy I never got caught, like, officially. That's it. That's it, guys. That's all you got to say about that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to remember a really good one, like falling asleep. I'm like, fuck! Just write it down for next time. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Fuck that. I've got more in the bank. Are you you slicing apples over there? What the fuck's that noise? That's your paper. (laughs) All right, Stephen. Thank you so much for such a a colorful colorful walk down memory lane. Uh, All your debauchery. I, I see how you and Ryan connect. You know, <laughs> such a beautiful little chemistry you guys got there. It makes me uh, sad you've never gotten the pure joys of giggling as you've done something wrong in the middle of the night and just running, <laughs> hoping not to get caught. Me? Yeah, you. That's not how I'm wired. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm too terrified. So uh, that, that's half the thrill. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Uh, that was that was a lot. Ho- that was a hoot and a holler. That was a hoot and a holler. I really enjoyed that. I enjoy talking to you guys every single week, and um, I know the listeners do too. Uh, listeners, thank you so much for hanging in there with us. Uh, please like, subscribe, follow, rate us, leave us a comment, leave us an email. Email, the email at us. coinopcowboyspod at gmail.com. That is coinopcowboyspod at gmail.com. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to say your names one last time for a sign off, and uh, we're going to go in order. And that order is perfect again, obviously, because everything's perfect here. Don't play demonologist, by the way. That shit's scary. Um, Steven. Is it a comedy? It is now. <laughs> Steven, what yeah. do you got? For what? Hey, man. Sign off. Well, my sign off is simply this. Go have a little fun if you haven't. If you miss out when you're a kid, go out there and uh, throw an egg at a house. Just see how it feels. See you guys. Temple. <laughs> Next up, Ryan. Once again, Quinopians, thank you for joining us on this journey. This journey through life. There's a lot of mysteries out there. <laughs> There's a lot of laughs out there. You just got to live to your best. And enjoy this crazy journey. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Last but certainly not least, Chris. Good evening, Ramblers. Make sure you swing by Steezy's radio station after the podcast. It's right next to the Cracker Barrel. Get yourself some sloppy steaks to end your evening on good note. Dark toot and natty eyes. All right, Matt. We're out. (laughs) All right. The fucking Detroit Lions have two wins over the 49ers who have lost four weeks in a row, baby.